If you're looking to move to Cleveland, Ohio, then you have a huge decision to make. Should you move over to the east side or should you move over to the west side? And yes, there is a difference. Generally speaking, or like common stereotypes is that the east side is gonna be blue blood, cultural, liberal, and diverse, where the west side is gonna be blue collared, conservative, and has new money. And what's crazy to me is that it's only about a 45 minute to like an hour drive from the farthest west point to the farthest east point, but sometimes it feels like you're in two completely different states here. Make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end of this video because I will be revealing some major key similarities and differences between the two sides and hopefully answer the million dollar question, which side is right for you? You gonna be an east sider or are you gonna be a west sider? What's going on everybody? Alex Colasar here with Century 21 here in Northeast Ohio. And if you're looking to move to the area, Make sure you send me a text, phone call, email, because no matter how you want to get a hold of me, I got your back. We're moving to the area. Now, the greater Cleveland area is actually divided by the Cuyahoga River. And for a lot of people, I've noticed you've having trouble pronounce it. It's not Cuyahoga. We have Cuyahoga County and the Cuyahoga River here, and it really splits the greater Cleveland area into two separate spots, hence the east and west side. And really this divide all started back in 1836 with the Cleveland Bridge War. And really to make a long story short here, basically what happened is a Cleveland land developer ended up building a bridge that bypassed Ohio City main commercial district. And as a result, the residents there were pissed. I mean, they were gonna lose a ton of money from people you know, skipping over their commercial district entirely. So as a result, Ohio City, uh, the west side versus the east side ended up boycotting the bridge. They both sides met at the bridge and they ended up duking it out. I don't believe anyone was actually killed during this, but this really all fueled the rivalry between the West and East side. So Cleveland's uh, divide really has a rich history of like 190 years, but nowadays the rivalry kind of feels more of like an OSU Michigan type feeling where it's like, now nah, we're better than you type thing. But really at the end of the day, it's all good fun. Or is it? Now it doesn't happen as much as it used to, but back in the day, whether you just moved here or you were born and raised in here, they would always ask you uh, when you met somebody new, like, hey, where are you from? And typically they weren't asking like, hey, which city are you from or what neighborhood? They wanna know, hey, do you reside on the west side or do you reside on the east side? Because people here, especially if you were born and raised, are either diehard east siders or diehard west siders. Over on the west side, you'll hear the term a lot, west side, best side. Uh, but honestly, as time you know began to go on and we had a bunch of new people begin to move to Cleveland, uh, really that history and culture between the east and west side, in my opinion, is being lost a little bit. You know, as new people moving in are beginning to buy homes north, south, east and west, and really they're kind of changing the entire dynamic of the Cleveland landscape. Um, but in general, guys, I think that the east side is gonna be a little bit more of a big city uh, feel, kind of like the east coast, whether it's like Baltimore, New Jersey. Um, like I said, it has a much more east coast, big city feel, where the west side is gonna be a little bit more quainter and suburban. Um, it does get a little bit more flatter kind of farmlands once you start to go really west. So. The dynamic of the landscape here are two completely different areas. And what's crazy is the east side and west side both began building, honestly, kind of simultaneously. And they often mirror each other a lot. You know, Cleveland Heights and Lakewood look and feel very similar. So does Shaker Heights and Rocky River and Westlake and Solon and so on. Now over on the west side, back in the day, this is where all of the factories were built. Think of coal, steel, and cars. And it was built really close to the Cuyahoga River just because of the easy transportation there. But as a result, near these factories, they had to build a bunch of housing for all of the workers there. And as a result, the people who owned the factories essentially did not want to be associated uh, with their workers and to escape the pollution, the chaos, and all the noise. Essentially, they all moved their money over to the east side. And this is why it's coined that the east side has old money because back in the day when these factories were being built and there were tons and tons of money, it was all being filtered and poured into the east side of there. Over on the east side off Euclid Ave, we have the famous Millionaire's Row there. There used to be almost like 250 homes there. And by homes, I mean mansions. Um, but nowadays there's only four mansions standing, which is absolutely crazy. And again, this is why you'll hear the term old money. And the architecture on the east side is, is very old and very beautiful. 
really something that the west side does not have now we'll say that on the east side the streets here uh can be a little bit of confusing i know people from the west side absolutely hate driving on the east side because they say our roads are so windy we got tons of like five-way intersections and roundabouts where over on the west side it's going to be laid out in a little bit more of like a grid like fashion um, but that's because the dynamic of the landscape itself are completely different right over on the east side it's actually over by shaker heights and university heights is kind of the foothill trails um, of the allegheny mountain range and so it's going to be much hillier over here on the east side compared to the west side and on the west side it's really the start of the great Plains. so on the west side it's going to be pretty flat where over on the east side you're going to see a bunch more rolling hills and as a result they obviously had to build roads a little bit differently here now when it comes to transportation i gotta admit that the west side has way better highway access when compared to the east side where the east side is a little bit like highway landlocked um, just because they don't really have as many highways connecting their outer suburbs into that downtown area um, over on the east side you have main roads um, that take you straight to downtown but Again, you gotta drive through these Cleveland inner suburbs. And in my opinion, a lot of the inner suburbs here in Cleveland are not the greatest. And some areas might be a little bit sketchy for you. Uh, but over on the west side, you have tons of access, right? You got 71, 90, and even 480. And essentially they all connect their outer suburbs into that downtown area. So it's super convenient to drive to downtown and home. And as a bonus, you don't have to drive through all these uh, neighborhoods that might be a little bit sketchy, hit all these stoplights and whatnot. So if you're looking for quick highway access, definitely hit up the west side. Plus over on the west side in Brook Park, they have the Cleveland International Airport. So if you do travel a lot, maybe relocating on the west side might be the best bet for you. Now let's talk about the weather and snowfall between the two sides, because if you're coming from somewhere warmer, or hell, even if you live in Ohio, Nobody really wants more snow unless you're out in the mountains in Colorado or Utah or something like that. But just know that here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, east and west, one side does get a little bit more snow than the other. The east side, unfortunately, is going to get a lot more snow than the west side. And we can actually thank Lake Erie for that. Because of the lake effect snow, um, really all along the east side of Cleveland, all the way up to Buffalo, New York. I'm sure you've heard stories about Buffalo, New York getting like, like, five foot of snow on a snowfall and that's just because the moisture of the lake just constantly with the winds again, i'm not a meteorologist but it just dumps snow constantly and luckily for the west side again they'll still kind of be in that like snow belt a little bit um they just don't get as much snow and you'll see funny pictures like this all the time where people on the east side are struggling you know plowing driveways and whatnot then over on the west side Obviously it's gonna be cold, but they're out grilling and stuff, having a good time. So um, you'll notice a lot of people too, when they travel from either east to west, uh, usually typically for work, um, right around the I-77, almost like right in the middle, you'll see sometimes a like wall of snow, like you're driving into a storm, separating that snowstorm from the sunny skies. If you've ever been somewhere tropical, kind of like Florida, for instance, you'll be sitting in a boat out on the lake and then you'll see this huge rain cloud go by, completely misses you, and it's kind of the same thing here, right? You might have a lot of scattered uh, snowstorms on the east side, so it's gonna be completely different. Now over on the west side in North Ridgeville, on average, they get around 52 inches per year of snow, where when compared to Chagrin Falls on the east side, they get an average of 82 inches per year. Now for only being like a 45 minute drive apart, that's a 30 inches of snow difference. So if you're coming from somewhere warmer, hey, relocating on the west side might be the best bet for you as well. Now, let's hop into some direct comparison between the east and west and see which one's right for you. Now, over on the east side, we got all the sports venues because downtown is pretty much on the east side. I mean, we got the Q, Jake's Field, and the Brown Stadium as well. And the east side also has the Playhouse Square District, the Great Lakes Science Center, and of course, the one and only, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. University Circle is also over on the east side and it's home to multiple and major world-renowned museums such as the Cleveland Museum of Art, at the Cleveland Museum of National History, and of course, the one and only the Severance Hall, which is actually coined as one of America's most beautiful concert halls. Cleveland's East Side is also home to some numerous institutions of higher learning. We got Case Western Reserve University over here, the Cleveland Art Institute, and of course, the Cleveland Institute of Music. And let me tell you, the architecture on the East Side 
It is extremely beautiful and you almost feel like you're in an old Eastern city. Um, but again, with that big town feeling where the West side is gonna lack a little bit when it comes to that architecture. And that's also why it's coined as the phrase as having new money. And that's because as you know, it began developing and whatnot, a lot of the suburbs are gonna be built in the early 50s and whatnot. So um, a lot of the places over there are gonna be a lot newer. Now, while the West Side may not have like all this gorgeous architecture, I will say that they're huge into local art and art museums. Um, as you're driving down the street, you'll see tons of art murals um, on the side of buildings and whatnot. And really it gives the towns over there a really electric and trendy feeling. By the Market Square, they got a cool mural called By Hand. It's actually right next to the West Side Market, which is absolutely stunning. And they literally almost have the exact same rec replica in the Grand Central Station there in New York. Now for like 42 bucks, you can go through, take a food tour, and you can try endless amounts of food here. Then just west of downtown Cleveland, you got Detroit Shoreway. And over there, they got the Shoreway mural here. Detroit Shoreway is really a gentrified neighborhood that is really up and coming. And honestly, I've seen some very, very expensive condos be put up there. I saw one for 800,000 and one just shy of a million. I mean, they honestly look like something that belong in like LA or New York. So it's really cool to see a lot of people uh, filtering a lot of money here into Cleveland because the city doesn't get a good name for itself. But over the years, honestly seems like ever since the Cavs won that championship, Cleveland has totally been on the rise up. We've seen a lot of young professionals and families relocate over to here to Cleveland, Ohio. Now over on the east side, I think the Waterloo Arts District is probably the most comparable, but it is pretty far north here. But on the west side, I mean, there are countless, and I mean countless murals to check out. I only named a few that I really came across, so I'm sure that's like one one thousandth of really what's out there. So. If you're coming to the city, make sure you drive around and check out tons of these awesome neighborhoods. Now let's talk about the young professionals and the millennial population here uh, because Cleveland has a ton of trendy areas that are really appealing to these uh, younger demographics here. And I gotta say most of them are gonna be found on the west side here. We're talking Detroit Shoreway, Lakewood, West Park, Ohio City and Tremont. These are probably gonna be the most trendy and walkable neighborhoods. And you can see they're relatively close to downtown here. And the nightlife here in these areas are probably one of the best. You have so many local bars within these certain neighborhoods, ton of trendy restaurants. So really it's a fun spot to go hang out with friends and even family. Um, over on the east side, you're not gonna see as many like walkable neighborhoods or trendy spots. Maybe Coventry Village probably has like one of the most best nightlifes over on the east side besides the downtown Cleveland area. Now outside of those trendy areas over on the west side, I will say that the west side is gonna be, again, a little bit more flat and a little bit more of cookie cutter style homes here. Uh, the homes were kind of just built up very quickly, not to say that they're in bad condition at all, but I will say that the dollar for dollar, you probably can get a little bit more house over on the west side, when compared to the east side, which is gonna be uh, typically a little bit older of a home style over there. Um, but dollar for dollar, west side probably can get you a little bit farther. Um, and I will say there's a lot more affordable houses over on the, the west side too that are in low crime areas. It seems like with the east side a lot of times that areas with like affordable housing are typically gonna be in areas with a little bit higher crime. So there are a ton more houses that are under 200,000 over on the west side to choose from. So if you're looking for a house kind of under that $200,000 mark on the west side, I definitely recommend checking out Brook Park, Parma, Parma Heights, Old Brooklyn, and Fairview Park. Now over on the east side, I definitely suggest checking out University Heights, but the taxes here can be quite high. Uh, south of Shaker, same thing, Mayfield Heights, and South Euclid. Now, if you're looking to move to Cleveland and you are not single and you have a family, maybe moving to a school district is very, very important to you. And in my opinion, and from what I'm seeing uh, as far as school ratings here, Eastside definitely has a leverage over on the west side. The east side has so many great school districts, uh, with Solon being named as like the best school district in all of Ohio. You also have Beechwood, Hudson, Orange, and also Chagrin Fall District they're all gonna be some of the best in the state here. Now over on the west side, you definitely gotta check out Bay Village, Rocky River, and Avon. These are by far gonna be your best bets when it comes to safety and also the awesome school districts. Um, but here in Northeast Ohio, 
I feel like it's very, very affordable, and that's what we're kind of coined as, like a very affordable place to live, you know, when compared to the bigger cities like Phoenix or Dallas or Baltimore or something like that. I mean, we're not even on that radar as far as prices, but I will say here in Northeast Ohio, if you're looking for a area with a great school district, you're probably gonna pay a pretty penny for some of the houses here, and they're not gonna be as cheap as you probably think they are. Um, for one of these houses in these awesome school districts, you're looking anywhere from like 300,000 to like 400,000, all the way up even to like that $700,000 mark. So it definitely can be expensive. But again, you're paying for that great education, the safety, and of course, the comfort of living here. All right, now we made it to the part in the video where I'm just gonna summarize as many things as fast as possible in a direct comparison. All right, so let's go. Number one, if you travel a lot for work, um, maybe moving on the west side near Brook Park might be your best option. The east side, you're definitely gonna be around a 30 to 50 minute drive, depending on the traffic here. Number two, the west side has way better highway access, uh, so it's much easier to get places a lot quicker, where on the east side, you're definitely gonna be taking some windy roads, some stoplights, and some of these busier roads to get into the downtown area. Not a whole lot of highway access here. And number three, if you're looking for a super trendy area, so to say, I definitely recommend checking out the west part um, of Cleveland there. On the east side, you're not gonna get that many trendy areas. Number four, if you're looking for like a more of a big city feel, I definitely recommend moving over on the east side. Um, it's gonna be, like I said, like a, more of like a New Jersey type feel where the west coast is gonna be a little bit of like that Midwestern feel. It's gonna be a little quieter and suburban and not as much to do unless you kind of move closer to that downtown area over there on the west side. And number five, I gotta say dollar for dollar, you're probably gonna be able to stretch a little farther over on the west side when compared to the east side. East side tends to be a little bit more expensive. And that leads us to number six, which is gonna be the property taxes on the east side. Uh, some places like Shaker Heights in the University Circle area, I mean, we're talking like 4% on your property taxes. And best believe it's gonna make your houses, uh, you're not gonna be able to afford as much, right? So over on the west side, property taxes tend to be a little lower. I mean, we're talking like 2% to maybe like that 3.5%. So you're gonna be able to stretch your dollar for dollar a little bit farther, like I just said. And number seven, uh, the east side of Cleveland, we're talking East Cleveland, not necessarily the East Side, is actually the poorest city in all of Ohio. And it also is like in the top 50 poorest cities in all of America. Now the people on the West Side completely associate the East Side of Cleveland as being a really dangerous area just because of East Cleveland when that is not the case. And number eight, the last thing I got for you is that the East Siders uh, tend to be a little bit more like stuck up or snobby at least that's what the West Siders say. Uh, but I appreciate you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, make sure you leave them in the comments or make sure you send me a text, phone call, email, because no matter how you want to get a hold of me, I got your back. We're moving to the area. I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.